This is a curatorial act. It's, it's a gathering of, of work as a means of a statement. I'd like to thank all of the readers here this evening, and all of you, and Rory, and David, as well as the ACA Gallery. Thank you all very, very much. As a means of making an editorial statement or a publishing position for No Press, I wanted to read uh, a brief statement on poetics. This was recently published in the manifesto issue of the Capuana Re Review out of Vancouver, British Columbia, the other Vancouver. Poetry is the last refuge of the unimaginative. <laughs> poetry has little to offer outside of poetry <laughs> itself. Poets choose to be poets because they do not have the drive to become something better. <laughs> Readers are a book's aphorisms. All bad poetry springs from genuine feeling. To be natural is to be obvious, and to be obvious is to be inartistic. Had poetry sadly knows its poetry, while writing doesn't always know its writing. Art is a conversation, not a patent office. Poets and ostrich-like ignorance of the potential of sharing as opposed to hoarding their texts are ignoring, the potentially, are ignoring potentially the most important artistic innovation of the 20th century, collage. What's at stake? Nothing but their own obsolescence. If you don't share, you don't exist. We expect plumbers, electricians, engineers, and doctors to, have to both have a specific and specialized vocabulary and be on the forefront of new advancements in their field, but scorn poets who do the same. Having been unpopular in high school is not just cause for book public publication. <laughs> immature poets imitate, mature poets steal. The worst thing about poetry is poetry. The true artist is known by the use of, of he makes of what he annexes. In theory, there's no difference between theory and practice, but in practice there is. Rules are guidelines for stupid people. In poetry, we applaud mediocrity and ignore radicality being that this is a Canadian statement, I will end with the word please. In poetry, we applaud mediocrity. Poetry has more to learn from graphic design, engineering, architecture, photography, automotive design, or any other subject than it does from poetry itself. Poets should not be told to write what they know. They don't know anything. That's why they're poets. The internet is not something that challenges who we are or how we write. It is who we are and how we write. Poets being poets are simply the last to recognize this fact. At its base, the internet is a Borghesian library of perversions and pornography whose only redeemable feature is the card catalog itself. If writing a poem is inherently tragic, it is because it's hard to believe that the author had nothing better to do. It is inherently tragic because we still choose an outdated form as a medium from argumentation. If we had something to say, why would we choose the poem with its sliver of audience and lack of cultural cachet as the arena to announce that opinion? No more poetry, please. <laughs> Thank you all very, very much. Thank you. Great. Uh, thanks, Derek. I don't know, Derek, if you remember, but when you stopped uh, House Press, uh, you put a posting on Poetics about it. Oh, yes. And uh, I didn't know you did nothing. But I sent you an email and told you don't stop, you know, don't stop watching your press. <laughs> Well, and, and, and well, I didn't. <laughs> Don't stop thinking about tomorrow. Yeah, but it, uh, really, uh, really excited for tonight. It was really great for everyone to come out and stick around. Um, what can I tell you? There's a mailing list for upcoming Poog events. The next one in this series is Saturnalia Books. Uh, last Tuesday of the month, as always, uh, April 26. Um, and uh, coming after that is uh, Coconut Books. There's also a bunch of books on the table for Sal if we're able to uh, support our friend here and uh, ship him back to Canada. And uh, there's also uh, some CDs there from Rory. You can pick those up too. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>